lady, a Doberman Whippet, and Pepper, a miniature shepherd mix, could be eating too many dog biscuits. They're overweight, and the rules say they shouldn't be here. <laughs> lady and Pepper live at Majestic View Condominium and Plantation, where the rule is no dogs over 25 pounds. Their owners, Arthur and Patricia Bolton, admit Lady and Pepper are overweight. Each dog weighs close to 40 pounds. But when the condo association told them to get rid of the dogs or get out, the Bolletons refused. They said they had been singled out when their neighbors owned overweight dogs, too. The condo association sued, and last April, Circuit Judge Robert Andrews agreed with the Bolletons. They had been unfairly singled out, the judge said. Judge Andrews decided the condominium association should have given the Bolletons the chance to answer an alleged violation, and then, if they were in violation, give them a chance to comply with the restriction. The condominium association was arbitrary, the judge said, and the Bolletons could keep their dogs. Which they did. But the condo association is appealing, and the case goes back to court later this month. The Bolletons feel the principle is worth fighting for. So does the Condo Association, represented by attorney Dan Rosenbaum. The underlying issue isn't important, what happens to the dog. We're not, we're not there to litigate the dog's future, the dog's well-being. We're, we're litigating every time the condominium concept, and that is, are we going to make unit owners abide by their agreement? Are we going to make the system work? Judge Andrews compared the condo board to a government and wrote, enforcement of restrictions by condominium boards must be timely, consistent, and fairly administered. Condo lawyer Gary Polyakov sometimes has to make the same point to his clients. So it's really not up to the association to selectively determine which rules it will or will not enforce. Uh, the association, just like our police forces in society, are required to up uphold the law. If a condo board is a police force, then Polyakov's law firm is a prosecuting agency of condominium law. Polyakov and his partner, Alan Becker, once worked out of the trunks of their cars. Today, the only trunks here are the lines that will soon link computer terminals to an extensive library of court rulings, condo bylaws, even home phone numbers of condo presidents. 500 condo and homeowner associations get their legal advice from this staff of 21 lawyers. Dan Rosenbaum is in court regularly, playing prosecutor on behalf of a condo board, suing a unit owner because a bylaw was broken, a rule was ignored, an assessment wasn't paid. When there's a violation by one, uh, the principle is violated. And everybody else says that principle is not important anymore. I'm litigating a, a rules violation or a covenant case, but I'm selling the system every time. I couldn't think of a better, a better source of, uh, of work for lawyers than condos because everybody seems to be suing. From where he sits, Judge Andrews sees no end to lawsuits resulting from condo living. The majority of people moving in there haven't given up this concept of property ownership and certain unalienable rights that go with the right uh, with the ownership of property. The closer you put people together, the more the the more an insignificant uh, little problem is going to end up a major problem. From his sixth floor terrace at his Oakland Park condominium, Vico Confino can see the recreation area below: the pool, the tennis court, the clubhouse. But it was what Confino couldn't see that provoked such a bizarre and bitter dispute here. A few years ago, as Confino tells it, the Recreation Committee replaced the ping pong table with a pool table. Confino preferred ping pong. Then the diving board disappeared. The splashing annoyed other unit owners. And then Confino, who owns two units here, found cracks in the pool deck. Pending board and committee meetings. Confino kept a close eye on the people running his condominium. He taped meetings, he wrote letters, he hired lawyers. For five years, Confino says he told the committee to repair the rec area or else, but nothing happened, so he went one step further. What Vico Confino did was track down the developer in Michigan, the developer who built this recreation area. And for $7,000, Confino paid for the pool, the tennis court, the card room, the whole clubhouse. Everyone still uses the facilities here, but now they belong to Vico Confino. I felt that $7,000 was the cheapest insurance policy I could buy anywhere to protect my investment. Confino now thinks he has more clout to force the association to make repairs. The condominium quickly took into court, claiming it has the right of first refusal on the land lease sale. Lawyer Ed Ruman speaks for the condo association. He says the recreation committee did not neglect the property. These people are not builders. These people are not engineers. I think they did everything reasonably expected of them. So it needs a couple thousand dollars worth of work. For a complex to size and the 
uh, value of it, it's really not that significant. And the problem here is, is that uh, we don't have competent management. I don't say that to insult any unit owner here. I respect every single one of them. This was bound to happen. Every condominium has a Vico Confino. Every condominium has a retired New York lawyer living in it. Several lawsuits are pending on both sides. In one of them, the association claims Confino illegally painted his terrace. In time, a judge will hear each complaint, then issue an order favoring one side or the other. And when all the suits are settled, Confino and his neighbors will still be here. They'll still have to live with each other. Before you live my age, all of you, you're crippled up mentally and physically. For now, though, many people here don't think much of Confino, his scrappy sidekick, Art Fries, or his decision to buy the rec lease from the developer. What did he buy it for? Is that Harassment. Harassment. That's what he Definitely. To lord it over us. Absolutely. Other River Shores residents have been living with each other and happily for years. These women meet weekly to make pads for bedridden cancer patients in Broward. They put their heads and their hands to use helping others. Many more condominium residents do too, as we'll report tomorrow. And we'll examine the key role condo voters play in the political process. They will continue to have great political clout in their local communities and at the state level. Plus, a look at Sunrise Mayor John LaMelo campaigning in a condominium and what's behind his song and dance routine. Steve Bosque, Channel 10 Eyewitness News.